Bless all the dear children in thy tender care, and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. The words are so familiar to us, I almost don't need to tell you that our carol for today's comfort and joy is Away in a Manger. In the 1970s, American country singer Marty Robbins recorded a song called Christmas is for Kids. In many ways, that's become the attitude of our wider Western culture to Christmas. It's for kids! Lots of Christmas traditions, from Santa Claus to gift giving and even nativity plays, are child focused. For adults, Christmas celebration is often a heady mix of escapism and the nostalgia of reliving or recreating childhood memories. But that is usually as far as it goes. In the popular adult mind, Santa and his little helpers take their place alongside Jesus and the angels in the realm of nursery make-believe. That doesn't mean adults these days have no interest at all in Christmas. The Christmas movie genre is alive and well, and it reveals what many adults really want from their festive season. Maudlin sentimentality, perhaps, or a measure of the Christmas spirit expressed in remembering the less fortunate. But that is quite enough for the typical unchurched adult in our culture. What most do not want is a Christmas that is focused on Christ. Christmas is for kids. To what extent have we Christians contributed to this situation? At first glance, a popular carol like Away in a Manger seems to be part of the problem. The lyrics are as saccharine as the baby's sweet head. The stars twinkle twinkle in the bright sky. Repeatedly, the carol refers to the little Lord Jesus, a diminutive description that surely only confirms lost people in their view that Jesus is a childhood fantasy, but an adulthood irrelevance. For many years, the first two verses of this carol were attributed, almost certainly in error, to the reformer Martin Luther. These days, Christians may well feel almost relieved to know that Luther was not responsible for these words. On the other hand, there are a couple of notable aspects of Away in a Manger which should give cause for pause, even to adults. First, the childlike faith of Away in a Manger is something to be emulated, not something to be despised. It's often said that Jesus commends a childlike faith, but not a childish one. In the carol, we sing, I love you, Lord Jesus. Are those words that you can say? Try it, perhaps. Say them to him now. For some, I imagine, it may be hard to express our love for Jesus in these terms, even if we do have such feelings, or perhaps we know what we're supposed to feel. But love for the Lord Jesus is basic to Christianity. As the Apostle Peter writes to believers, though you've not seen him, you love him. Jesus expects his followers to love him, and even asks his disciple Peter three times, do you love me? Of course, this love that believers have for Jesus is no mere sentimental attachment. It's a love that's closely linked to obedience. And our love for Jesus is a consequence of his gracious love shown first to us while we were still sinners. Knowing and receiving God's grace given to me in the gospel, I do want Jesus to stay by my side in the darkness as the carol sings. Though not merely as some kind of heavenly comfort blanket, but as heaven's champion, Jesus is a mighty warrior, faithful and true. As the Church of England's Book of Common Prayer puts it, there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. The second aspect of Away in a Manger worth dwelling on is the clear shift in the second half of the carol from earth to heaven. Jesus is no longer away in a manger, looked down upon by the stars, he's now located in or even above the bright sky, beyond the stars. Indeed, in the last verse of the carol, he's no longer little Lord Jesus at all. He's exalted on high, even as we ask him to stoop down to be close by us forever. This is a biblical view of Almighty God, who is both transcendent, above all, and imminent with his people. As God himself announces in the book of Isaiah, I dwell in a high and holy place, and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit. Not only is Jesus now exalted to the highest place, but he's going to bring believers with him to the place where he now is. He's bringing many sons to glory, each one who believes in his name. And in order to do that, Jesus will fit us for heaven, 
sanctifying us by the truth of the word of God and continuing his work in us until we are blameless. Jesus himself said, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. We can only receive these blessings with the childlike spirit of utter dependence that a way in a manger represents.